Welcome to another video. We have an improper integral here waiting to be taken care of. Yeah, why is it improper? Because you can't plug in infinity into anything you're doing, so it's improper. We have to take limits in that direction. Um, and that's it. So, this would have been a very easy integral if this x was sitting on top here because we could make this whole expression our u and then the derivative of u will be x, some x dx, right? But MIT knew what they were doing. They dragged the x down here just to make life difficult for the ordinary man. But there's a secret. Always know that whenever you have x squared plus 1, there is this thing that tells you about tangent. Like if you use, say x equals tan theta, then you know that maybe a tan substitution would work. Or can you split this into two so you do uh, partial fraction decomposition? I, I don't know if that's the most effective way to go about this because um, you might get an answer, you will get an answer, but it might just be a longer trip. So I think making x to be our tangent might work something out for us. Let's get into the video. Please remember to like, share, and leave a comment under this video. And if you're not subscribed, I need you. Please subscribe and join the family. So let's make x equal to tan theta. We're going to say that let x be equal to tan theta. So we immediately find dx. We differentiate both sides. We're going to have secant squared theta d theta. Okay, now we have these boundaries and this has created a problem. Okay, so let's just clean everything up. If x is tan theta, it simply means that theta is arctan of x, right? Now, we need to evaluate this. If we put 1 here, arctan of 1 is going to be pi over 4. So we, when we rewrite this integral, we're gonna, it's going to come here. We're going to have the integral of pi over, from pi over 4. What will be the top part? So we're going to say that when theta is evaluated, theta evaluated at 1, is because we're changing now the variable of integration from x to theta, okay? So uh, what we have here is going to be d theta. So we have to evaluate this, and we just evaluated for 1. So theta evaluated at 1 will be arctan of 1, and that's going to be equal to pi over 4. That's what we have here. We have to do the same thing here. So let's make a box here. The same thing. If we evaluate theta, we cannot plug in infinity. So what we're going to say is as x goes to infinity, what's happening to theta? Theta is going to pi over 2. This one you can only do from the graph of arctangent. Remember the graph of arctangent is like this. It's a graph that goes this way nicely. And this is a horizontal asymptote at pi over 2. And this one is negative pi over 2. Sorry this point, negative pi over 2. Just move it here. Okay, now, this, as x goes to infinity, this is only approaching pi over 2. That's the maximum it's approaching. So the limit is pi over 2, and that's why this is an improper integral, because you take limit. And that's what I just said. As x goes to infinity, theta goes to pi over 2, and that becomes the upper boundary. And then we can write our expression. What is dx? We already said dx is secant squared theta d theta. And under, we said x is tan theta, so we're going to have tan theta. And in here, we're going to have tan squared theta plus 1. 
Now, how is this easy? Well, this is super easy because as a good trig student, you must know that tan squared theta plus one is secant squared theta. Just as you know that one minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta, it's the same thing. It's from the same equation, that's where these two show up. So this is the same as this, we can cancel them out, and all you have left is just d theta over tan theta. So we can go here and say this is equal to the integral from pi over four to pi over two of d theta over tan theta. This is sweet because every calculus student in the world knows the integral of one over tan theta is the natural log of sine theta. Do it several times and it stays with you. So let's, let me show you. So this is the same thing as, we can write this as the integral from pi over four to pi over two of, see ten, one over tan theta is the same thing as cosine theta over sine theta. Now you can use u substitution for this one and you're good, right? So here, I'll just do a quick u substitution. I'll say let, oh, no more u. We already used u, right? No, we haven't used u. Nice. Let u be equal to sine theta. So we know that du is going to be equal to cosine theta d theta. But now, because we have made a u substitution, I have to evaluate all the, um, the value, the boundary. So I'm saying, what would be the value of u at pi over 4? Well, the value of u at pi over four will be sine pi over four. That will be equal to rad two over two. And the value of u at the upper boundary, which is pi over two, will be equal to, what is sine pi over two? It's one. So this integral, what we have is actually the integral from square root of two over two to one of one over u du because cosine theta d theta will be replaced with du and sine theta will be replaced with u and just that's it and that's just it so this is your natural log of u evaluated from never stop learning doesn't stop learning, have stopped living. Bye-bye.